only got one gun left, right? It means I've had a long fucking day, okay? So let's get this over with so I can get back to Jersey before I kill myself here instead. You know, this place is a fucking dump. Now look, you don't seem like you're exactly, uh, I don't know, competent in the field of firearms. So let me clue you in on something. Buying a gun, serious decision, okay? Serious fucking decision. You buy something like this in uh, Sears, and there's paperwork, right? Rules, checks. There, there are fucking laws and shit. And I'm sure a Precambrian halfwit like yourself hasn't even considered that. Can I see it? This is what separates us from the animals, my friend. My God, it's beautiful. I crawl down this cold, dark tunnel for years, making my portal into a box. Give me that! Just, what are you, some kind of village idiot? You never point a gun at another human being. I mean, that's just an accident waiting to happen. You gotta get these things in your head. Do you have the money? I stashed it in this plain brown paper bag. <gasps> this is exciting. What are you thinking? You're walking across town with a fucking paper. All right, let me count it. It's not my responsibility if you fucking blow your hand off or your face off, but. It's not my fucking problem. Good. Garçon, garçon, il y a une cigarette dans mon café. Et cet omelette, il a un goût de doigt de pied tombé dans les épreuves. Monsieur, il n'y a pas de cigarette dans votre soupe et votre omelette, et il va très bien aujourd'hui. Pourquoi me prenez-vous Un chien aveugle. Que voulez-vous que je fasse Que je vous lèche les bottes Ou que je m'enivre ces pommes de terre Répondez-moi ça. Euh, monsieur. Il vous faut manger ce qui se trouve devant vous, ou bien vous quittez ces lieux pour aller fouiller dans la, dans la poubelle. Salaud C'est vous C'est vous qui mangerez ce qui se trouve devant moi Vous mangerez cette merde Je ne parle pas aux oiseaux. Vous parlez toute la journée à un singe, mais vous ne pouvez pas répondre à un oiseau. Vous êtes un hypocrite, un menteur et un orphelin. Que voler ce qui est déjà dit. Mais votre estomac n'est pas vide. Cette pièce n'est pas vide. Not much of a turnout tonight, huh, Primo? Well, I... Yeah, remind me again, how many uh, comps did I say you could... Oh, well, you said two. Relax, two. relax, that's not what we're having this little conversation about. What we are talking about is uh, your toast-loving wine country. Your Monsieur Perry and parlez-vous whatnot. Well, what's the matter with France? Nothing, and that's exactly the point. It's good work. I think it's... It's good work. It's just that it lacks a certain relevant... Uh, how shall I put it? Sincerity. I mean, French surrealism has not had an audience in this neighborhood for... for quite some time now. Have you ever thought of Spanish? Have you ever done any writing in Spanish? I saw Man of La Mancha when I was younger, but I 
kind of think I might not probably know any Spanish. Well, that is a problem, isn't it? But there are tapes. I could listen to them in my sleep, or maybe catch a soap opera at the laundry. No, you, you're missing the point here, Frank. Do you want to know what the point is? Actually, I... Uh... You got all the feathers. But there are no chickens. This is all very interesting, but I fail to see how... Do you know that in the frost of winter, a chicken's neck is tough like frozen syrup? My father would be swinging that butcher's blade upward of an hour before he'd hear a beak hit the floor. And all the while, the horrifying screechings for mercy as their claws were twitching like worms on a hook, feathers everywhere, just like your performance tonight. Sure, he learned a lot about life and death, but do you want to know what he really learned? Donald, I have no idea. A worm on a hook is a most captive audience. I want you to think about what I said tonight, Frank. You're writing all the questions, but you're not investigating the significance of the answers. It's like... You've got a box without the cigars. Well, I have been thinking a lot about boxes lately, for a piece on emptiness. Emptiness? This town is anything but empty, Frank. You go into any home or apartment and you'll find more drama and romance there than you can count. And the stories are in there, too. I want you to remember that. So, I should just go get them. In light of tonight's box office disaster, I'm gonna let you clean the theater. The windows, the rugs, the floors, the blood, the feathers, everything. Thank you, Donald. Thank me not. A good doctor loves his work and needs no sign of gratitude to validate that which he can't help but be terrific at. <laughs> Man, looks like a goddamn chicken exploded in here. Donald said I should do it. <laughs> sure. All right, I'll give you a call tomorrow. I'll just start with a few routine questions, Mr. Adelson. Uh, at what time was this attempted break-in? You're a bit young to be a detective. Oh, uh, well, I served six years on the force in St. Louis, um, and this is my fourth here in New York. If... Always at dinner time. They always come and interrupt your dinner. So, you would say this happened at uh, around 6 p.m., 6.30? Would you like some coffee? Um, can you describe... I have to warm it up. Uh, thanks. Um, can you describe the man? Did he have any um, unusual characteristics? A um, uh, uh, tattoo? I was sitting uh, down for dinner just like this. And there was a pounding on the door. And outside was this strunzel, this bum, this rat bastard, with a 357 and a mop. Was it your super? He might not have been alone. Please 
please direct me to the airport. Donde esta el baño? Where is the nearest bath? Esta es mi sopa o mi café? Is this soup or my coffee? Dame la plata que tiene en la registradora. Give me everything in the register. Y si no, yo te mata con mi pistola. If you don't, I will shoot you with my scary gun. seem like yourself. Are you two about ready for a run through? Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Please. Come on. You're going to miss the, the, There's frontal nudity in the second act. Just wait. Come on. better, it was fine, really, no, you're, you're getting much, well, you're almost there. I enjoyed it personally, but I still think it lacks a certain something with the audience. You need to tame your audience, Frank. Pull them in by the reins, hard as it were. Cut off the fins of the shark and make her watch you do an end zone dance on the deck. Fish don't blink, Frank. I'm sorry, but I don't get cable. That explains some things, sir. Uh... <laughs> hey, that better not be one of mine. 
Let's go talk about this outside. Anyway, I was just saying, you have to take the box away from, uh, stand right there, away from the audience. Make it yours, right there on the stage, by force if necessary. King Kong never asked for permission. Do you understand what I'm saying, Frank? No. I mean, yes. I think I'm finally beginning to understand what you're saying. Can't believe it didn't occur to me before. How could I have been so stupid? I have all of these feelings I need to interpret. You know about the way we're all... I can feel the rage of my character. This beautiful anger. This is really good. This is very helpful. That is beautiful, Frank. I should just go out there and do it. Plunder my way if I have to. Mm. Now you're getting it, Chico. Keep going with this. It's just a matter of momentum. You're going to be fine, Frank. By the way, how was my Spanish? Well, it had a certain sort of charm, I guess. Uh, it's hard to describe. What manner of business are you here for? Do you have some sort of pamphlet? Nothing like that. I'm with the Nesting Doll Cleaning Company. I have an appointment to clean this very apartment. I regret to inform you I took a very thorough bath just this morning. This is a free mandatory service. Do you consider yourself a little melancholic? It could be the company. I get it now. You're some kind of a pervert. It's either OCD or some kind of a perversion. No. Uh, actually, I'm looking for my motivation. Because I read in the Digest about these people suffering from the dissociative effects of post-traumatic stress. You know, dads who watch their babies drown in the pool or trainers who lost horses during lightning storms? Well, anyway, these people are so plagued by the sensation of helplessness that they feel compelled to tie up total strangers and act out their vulgar sexual fantasies. Would you say you're one of those people? I'm just a simple thespian. What else could I have that would compare to the sick, nasty plans you have in store for my chastity? You're a virgin. Well, no, but this is your dirty little fantasy, not mine. <laughs> I'm sorry you feel that way. I'll clean the bedroom. Will be just perfect. Hey, be careful. My riot control gear is in there. Do you think I could try it on? No. Well, this will be just great. 
You know, I really appreciate it. Twelfth Street and Third Avenue, please. Twelfth Street and Third Avenue? Yeah. You know, you hang around, you live there? N no. Now you're gonna ask me to go back into the belly of the beast there. It's better be for good reason. You got a broad waiting over here or something? No. You, you know, you know Jimmy One Nut? Um, no. Yeah, him and Joey No Shoes, they run that block. Jimmy One Nut? Jimmy One Nut, Joey No Shoes, the whole block. Hot Dog, Sweet Leaf. Those guys run the whole show down there for years. I oh, a whole different story back then, I tell you. I lost four knuckles with them guys in the, in the park back in the 80s. Oh, jeez. I'd be surprised if any of them are not in jail and still alive. Honestly. Honestly. I'm sorry, is this a gypsy cab? A gypsy? This? No, it's a regular cab. You you want to run a gypsy cab, I'll shut the meter off. We'll go all night long. I'll run you around. We'll get whatever you want. Palms, <laughs> salves, ointments, bombs, pills, powders, pimps, bitches. Everything's a go. I said, you said you didn't ever sleep, they tell me. Well, I'm freaking tired. I could go fucking. I, could, I, could, I need some sleep. I need sleep. And a raise. And a raise. Um, oh, you got company. Oh, damn it, I forgot the boat, too. Can I come in? You forgot your gun. Thanks. Look, I know we just met, and it was kind of <laughs> awkward up there in my apartment and all, but this is so great. Huh? Where do I get one of those? Well, uh, it was just a classified I found in the post. Working weapons for working women. I thought I was gonna have to take some sort of test, but I was exempt because I'm a man. Just now, as I crossed the lobby and descended to the street and got into this filthy cab, I felt okay. It was like holding Mother's hand under the restaurant table. Well, I guess it couldn't hurt to give you his number. Let's get this over with. <clears throat> this is a class on gun safety, so I don't want to answer any questions. There are no questions about the importance of gun safety. I thought this was a marriage counseling class. Then where's your husband? Dorothy! God damn it! He's sick, so I kept him at home. Okay, you can stay, okay? But just keep your mouth shut and your ears open. As I was saying, the federal government estimates that firearms are kept in more than half the households in this country. Now, with this freedom must come responsibility. As an owner of firearms, it is your responsibility for the safe handling and storage of your weapon. And there are a few rules to keep in mind as we go over this. Firearm safety is up to you. Okay, one. Handle all firearms as if they were loaded. How many more rules till we get to hold the gun? 
save your questions for the end so I can get home early. Number two. Never use firearms while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. It's just as much fun as driving drunk, but much, much more dangerous. May I use the bathroom? When do we get to handle the loaded firearms? Oh, I should just sell more drugs is what I should do. Uh, rule three. Keep your finger out of the trigger guard until you have selected a safe target. Now, by keeping your finger off the trigger guard until you are fixed on your target, you ensure that no pain in the ass, innocent bystander, snot-nosed kid is gonna show up at your doorstep after 20 years of therapy with a Smith & Wesson. <laughs> oh, you think, this, you think that's funny, huh? Okay, okay. We're gonna have a little uh, example now, a demonstration of uh, some of the techniques used in gun safety. This is called a shorty. Good for woodchucks, weddings, and warts. Used properly, this baby could even get you out of the draft. Now, ordinarily, I would never point a loaded gun at another human being, but uh, I think this exercise is important in light of the rules we've just gone over. Okay, now I'm gonna need two volunteers. Okay, uh, you, and you. All right, I would like to remind the class the safety on this weapon is not on. Now, everyone, look at this picture and think about firearm safety. First of all, I mean, look, look at the way she's dressed. I mean, she's gonna attract the wrong kind of element, and when carrying a firearm, that can be a bad idea. I mean, uh, it only takes one cock to spoil the hen house. Okay, next. Okay, now you, now you need to loosen up, okay? You're, you're holding it all wrong. The kick is gonna dislocate your shoulder. Relax. There. Nice and easy, there. Okay, okay, very good. It's one in every class. Good evening, ma'am. I'm Detective Atkins with the New York City Police Department. Um, do you have time to answer some questions? Well, I was just about to turn in for bed. But please, step inside for some coffee. Are you sure? Because I can... I'm quite sure. Please, step inside for some coffee. Hmm. This is a damn fine cup of coffee. Did you blend this yourself? Why, yes, I did. No. My family has a long history of exceptional grinding. <clears throat> um, uh, I, I'm gonna need to get some personal information. <laughs> Dutch chocolates, dry martinis, and Unrhyming poetry beneath the boiling June moonlight. Could I just have your full name and date of birth? Diane Caitlin Lakes, July 4th, 1979. And your residence? I lied just then about my age. I couldn't help myself. I must admit, Detective, this is very thrilling for me. I don't get out much these days. Oh. Uh, well, um, I see. Anyway, there was a call earlier from this building. To be perfectly honest, it was me who made that telephone call. It was also me who was seen running through the street with a gun. I was robbed, you see. Burglarized. The man responsible, of whom I can give an accurate description following my synopsis of the circumstances, forced his way into my apartment and by gunpoint, tied me to that chair over there with a taut rope, and then proceeded to steal a precious container of mine. It was his own mistake to leave the pistol behind. Uh, and what time exactly was this um, forced entry? Forced entry? Uh, 
excuse me, uh... Detective Atkins, I must admit that I'm very tired. Today's ordeal has left me short of breath. Would it be possible to continue this interview some other time? Of course. Um, uh, here's my card. If you, uh, if you have a further description, just give me a call. And um, don't hesitate. Standing guard, Dan? Oh, uh, no, I, I was just trying to remember where I parked my car. Can I offer you a glass of wine? That looks like bourbon from here. Still a Cub Scout, Daniel? Uh, um, actually, I still have quite a lot of work left, Miss Lakes. Uh, thanks for your hospitality. I'll let you know when I have something on the case. Good night. These are great. Really amazing. You still have this? Man, this looks a lot like the gun Michael Douglas had in Black Rain. There's this scene where they're all on motorcycles with these samurai swords. No! Please! I know nothing! I... I have wife! Kids! I work hard! Faster! I'm gonna point this gun at you. Because I can. And I'm gonna keep pointing this gun at you until you tell me where Sato is. I'm feeling extremely nervous. I write small birds. I feed small birds. I'm gonna make a coat out of you. Um, could you give me that back? Yeah. Sorry. So what have you been up to? Well, I've been working feverishly on this manuscript. I think it's good, but I'm not exactly sure of anything right now. I used to feel that exact same way until I dropped out of school. Well, these are great, Joe. I, I really appreciate it. I'll try to hang up as many as I can before I go to work. Oh, hey, I'm doing this vaudeville project with Janet on a Bowery for the next few weeks. Do you think you could cover my Thursday shifts at the restaurant? But do you think Margaret will let me work there? After what happened? Oh, man, we retiled all the floors. Don't even think about it. Well, I should get going. I was going to stop in the park and watch the college girls shiver. Have fun. Oh, you read my mind. Huh? Can I get you the usual? Oh, no, no, just uh, water for now. Flag me down when you're ready. It's 4.30 p.m. and I'm sitting in Aldo's restaurant on Havemeyer Street. So far, my investigation has only turned up more questions. Twelve armed robberies, twelve stolen boxes. I keep asking myself, could this be the act of jihadists? My God, what if it isn't? 
The clock is ticking, but I still can't get that witness out of my mind. Why do they always haunt me like this? Like a twisted knot of legs, lilac, and lips. Ugh. Four months of therapy flushed straight down to hell again. And to make matters even worse, my horoscope told me not to make any important decisions this week. So tonight I've been having sort of a Monroe man in time, if you will. <laughs> I'm not a pill freak or anything. This piece was originally intended to be a sonnet, but at the last minute I decided to go with free verse because I felt that it captured the untamed hunger I was looking for. Title, Boy Ran 11D. I hate you. Loathe the size of your head. You drink too much. When you're drunk, you can't even piss straight. And the same goes in bed. You're such a fucking mess. I'm so sick of you reeking of Captain Morgan and sobbing about your father. I see that smile on your face. That smug five inches and seven years of public education smirk? Who do you think you are? Waving that around. You seriously think... Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have one more poet tonight, and I must say I'm thoroughly impressed that more than five of you have lasted this long before retiring to the internet cafes to practice exercises in aloofedness. Anyhow, next we have a poet all the way from Staten Island. So people, please put your hands together and give a warm welcome to Mr. Michael Midnights. I'd like to thank you all for coming out tonight. For those of you who are fellow poets, and those of you who just can't stay away from these type of events, I hope this poem, you'll find a certain truth. A kiss for your conception. When you touch me, it's like being born all over again. Like the medical lights burning my pre-developed eyes, you make the sun grow bigger. You smile at me, and I smile at the sun. He even smiles back at me. When I hear your voice, it's the music of the delivery room. The nurse spanking my blood slippery bum like when you grab my ass two minutes before the I do's and we did, but we never had the only thing I ever wanted. The first thing I ever was, a child, our child, and the sun smiles back, and the sun smiles back. You can burn in hell, you filthy cow. You know that devil child worming in your rut gut is no more than the product of a three minute fuck fling with that queer house cleaner that filled in for Ma when she was sick. I will set fire to your footsteps. I will show you a nightmare. That's right, bitch. Just lay there. We have a special treat here at our Monday night poetry ruckus, a world premiere in English. So without further ado, a patented 
Francis Carroll production, Plants in My Head. <laughs> Me again, are you? Dies. <laughs> you were my idea in the first place. Oh, you, you, sir, could not hold an idea inside your head with a hard helmet. I dare say. <laughs> oh, you, you liar! What, 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 oh, dear God, what is that machine? No, no, no. Your picture's all over town. I'm not very good at this yet. You think you would have picked up the ropes by now? Imagine you pay your bills with the theater. I didn't rob you for rent. I guess I already knew that. It just seemed like something I should do to move on with my life. Is this a self-esteem issue? I'm not a scientist. I'm just trying to figure things out for myself. By the way, I wouldn't be too worried about the authorities. My description of you was vague at best. Maybe they should catch me. No, I don't think they should. Not for a while, at least. I think I like the way that sounds. everyone take your firing positions I, you know I don't know what you expect to get out of me all I got out of life is some guy who publishes a fucking book of mine and nothing came of it he didn't put an ISBN number on it fucked up the whole design of the book. He didn't do anything he promised to do with the book. Trial and error here, trial and error there. 
to get it or leave my fucking name on the cover. It's, it's, it's like... Dozens in here. Well, it's hardly a plethora. Huh. But what are they all for? At first, I thought all of this was in the name of symbolism. So you're a surrealist? More like a futurist. You ever see a bucket of paint fall off a truck? Well, that's sort of what I'm trying to do. So, who produces all of these accidents? Well, just Donald, I guess. Who's Donald? He was the man in the fur cape at the theater. Is he a futurist, too? I think he's more like a hypnotist. Sometimes when he's in the middle of a pontification, I feel myself slipping into a trance. You got any more, any heart, more, heart, more, heart, more, heart, more, heart, more, heart, more drama, and drama, and romance, too? We have uh, 30 reported robberies all over Manhattan. In each case, a seemingly worthless box is taken, followed by a ceremonial cleansing of the crime scene. Suspects vary in description, but the disturbing connection is among those victimized. Acute eccentrics, sir. A fraternity of criminal minds is marking this town for purification of the odd. So someone's trying to get rid of all the whack jobs, huh? Town's full of whack jobs. Built by whack jobs. It's owned by whack jobs. Sir, do you realize that there are two entire pages in the Bible dedicated to mildew alone? Are you suggesting that there's a terrorist cell of evangelical extremists in this city? That's horseshit! Actually, sir, Leviticus is Old Testament. You might remember that Leviticus is the foundation for kosher food habits, so it's more likely it's a cell of... Get out! Now! I don't have time for this! I Jesus! You, this investigation has not been biased, sir. I need a team of men, your best. This could be huge, sir. We could be sitting on something bigger than nine. Don't say it. Ugh. Ruth.
4.42 p.m. and my request for extending support at the precinct has been denied. One must remember that these are difficult times for us all. My involvement in this case has already crossed beyond professional lines. I have to stay sharp. The answer is out there, somewhere. And I can only hope I fare better than Caesar's wife. Frank, I'm at a loss for words, Frank. This writing, this emotion, this drama, this is beautiful, Frank. Thank you, Tom. Now, I'm gonna be blunt with you, Francis. This is a risky project. It's very unconventional, but I think that this, well, Frank, as you well know, I followed the Grateful Dead for nine magical years. It was a spirited time filled with the thrills and difficulties of self-awareness. And during this period, I, I experienced many levels of consciousness, one of which I like to describe as divine ethereal clarity or a level two dream vision. And right now, I'm experiencing slight waves of clairvoyance, which could be an insight into what just hold on a second, let me get this. Hello? Yeah, Ma. Yeah. Look, can we do this later? I'm uh, having a moment here. No, Ma. No, it's just Frank. No, Ma, just... Ma, just shut up. Just shut up! No, I'm sorry, Ma. Just... Yes, I love you too. All right, just take two of the red and lie down on the sofa, okay? And then I'll be home. I'm gonna call a colleague about a bigger venue. Finance, girls, you'll have everything you need. They're starving, Frank. The people of New York are starving like little kittens suckling on a piggy bank. What do you say? Well, I think this is exciting. Thinking has nothing to do with it. Then let's give it back to them. That's a sentiment in a man. I'll start calling people today. And uh, don't touch my cigars. Diane, I have reason to believe you're being followed by jihadists. 
No, 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 no. D calm yourself down. That's too dangerous. Just, just lock your doors and I'll be right over. That's really great. Thanks. Call me old fashioned, but I think that the black and white brings out the heart of it. It's all about the shadows. Look how the man on fire is dancing. That's really something else. This is my favorite part. <laughs> Watch how that guy knocks over the other guy. You can't fake that. Riots are like schools of fish. Oh. I almost forgot. Oh. Here's two tickets for tomorrow. Who's the other ticket for? That's a surprise. I'm sure it's a good one. Until we find out what's happening, I need to keep you somewhere safe. Do you have a water filter? Um, hole in the spring in the fridge. Take me home, Daniel. self-evident that a man with a hat is worth two in a bush and both. With just one stone makes a hell of a deal. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the following. The only thing we have to fear is not what this country can do for you, but what you can do for fear.
Hey, pal, uh, you're in the wrong seat, okay? Oh. Move. No, I, I don't think so. I think you're mistaken. Hey, hey what, what are you, crippled? Get lost! Come on, man. Hey, look, I, I, I didn't mean any, uh, it's just... I thought this was gonna happen one of these days. Let's go count the money. with the dummy? Do you think he's straight in his head? Oh, well, him? Uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine. He didn't look straight to me. <laughs> of course not. These are actors you're dealing with here. In this place, do you think they make any sense? After all these years, I'm beginning to think it doesn't really matter all that much. I'm afraid that due to extenuating circumstances of an extremely personal nature, a performer will not be able to complete tonight's introduction. Therefore, without any further ado, please allow me to introduce tonight's guest speaker. This man has climbed to the very top of the ladder in his field and then had the audacity to lift that ladder above his head and climb even higher. My boyhood idol and the hero of dozens, please allow me to introduce paleontologist Dr. Bruce. Over this winter, I had the fortune to lead an expedition into the caves on the Jersey shore. The remains we found tell the story of a man who lived and painted 75 million years ago in a world filled with large predators, frequent natural disasters, and of course, cave women.
can theorize from this fractured skull that our prehistoric friend met a foul end. Artists have always led troubled lives. Trouble holding a job, trouble holding a spear, and trouble with women. Yes, hello. I'd like to report an armed robbery in progress at the theater on Norfolk and Houston. Last I checked, uh, he was still on stage, and you'd better hurry if you want to catch him. The second act just started. Ladies and gentlemen, and those of you who could use a little work, you're about to participate in a social experiment so progressive it was over your heads years ago. Let me bring him out. Direct from Detroit, Michigan, the Motor City, home of the disco nap. Please put your greasy hands together for Leslie Picture Man. Thank you. All right, you know, people tend to get the wrong idea about me. They, they, they tend to think that I'm selfish and not sensitive, but until they really get to know me and get to know my center, they don't realize that I'm a real sensitive human being. I mean, just the other week, I'm with my mother-in-law, my mother and my mother-in-law, and she's saying to us, She's saying that she's going to leave all the money, I mean everything, to my kid's sister. Now I hurt. I hurt my fucking foot, breaking her damn hip. <laughs> it's always with the fucking hip, isn't it? It's always with the hip. You know, uh, my hotel room at uh, my uh, agent uh, booked me in. It's so small. It's so small. So small. It's so small, you'll hit your head on the floor trying to change a light bulb and wake up on a cottontail ranch in Nevada. <laughs> There's a lot of familiar faces here tonight. I invited all of you because I've learned something very important over these last few months. It actually occurred to me while I was committing my 23rd count of burglary. <laughs> finding a muse is like finding your luggage in a train station it might look like your bag, but it might not be. So, I brought all of yours back tonight. I put them over there. Feel free to find yours after the show. I really appreciate all of this. I'll see you in two to ten. Don't forget, King Kong wasn't the first person to boldly explore this town, and I won't be the last. Have you 
you going crazy? Thank <laughs> you.